We're in and ready for the news. In our first story, the finance minister, Ken Oferiata, says he will ensure greater discipline in the management of the economy this year to ensure government's expenditure stays within budgetary limits, despite it being an election year. It has become an unwritten rule for government in the Fourth Republic to embark on massive infrastructure as well as social development projects during election years just to appease electorate in order to win the elections. Now, this practice always leaves the economy vulnerable as excessive spending coming from borrowing and, and not revenues widens the country's fiscal deficits. But speaking to Joy News, Mr. Ken Oferiata said the government ultimately will have to comply with binding legislating or legislation and its own constraints, which requires that budget deficit does not exceed 5%. Um, so the deposit insurance um, system has not been put in place, mm. so you know your limits. Yeah. Um, we need to go after uh, people at the Bank of Ghana who participated in this. I mean, fortunately for us, that um, that moral issue is being resolved. I mean, the past three weeks, you've seen an escalation of that, so mm. that's wonderful. Um, so things will go wrong. How do you then um, bring some equanimity and ensure that people can go about their normal duties? In our assessment, I, I think we have about 16.28 billion. Uh, we've done about 12, so we have about 4 billion um, CDs that, that we have to do. Um, you know, uh, we'll see. And with that, as I mentioned, I have um, maybe a billion CDs somewhere. Mm. And then I can also add um, some paper um, to that. And these and payments be will be that. made in full as promised by the president, and he directed you to ensure it is done. This will be done so this year. I don't know what the president has promised that has not happened, you know. This, we'll get out this of will the happen IMF this year? Reserve. It has to. Everybody will get their money? It has to happen, you know. It's a, it's a tall tax, isn't it? But it, it leads to our also realization of how we should be more circumspect as a country, as mm. investors, as individuals. Uh, and that's just a painful lesson. And the finance minister given assurances to investors of various instruments uh, in small and micro finance schemes that ultimately their investments will be redeemed. Meanwhile, it was great showing uh, with great confidence in the economy. According to the finance minister about the recent roadshow for bonds, $3 billion it was and was oversubscribed to the tune of uh, $15 billion. Mr. Ferriata said part of the money will be used to address issues with independent power producers and related subjects of road infrastructure. Are almost close to the decision as to when we will trigger it. Um, but the assurance really is that we have um, some cash that we can use and we have some instruments that will bundle together to, to make that happen. We need to pack that behind us and, and move forward and, and people feel a sense of security that when a government uh, declares something or when a government manages something, it is done well. So, so what, what we are doing then, I mean, given that theory, is that we are now front-ending okay. and saying that, okay, maybe we have um, the capacity mm. um, to wait a little longer than the individual. Right. And really, that's what and the presidency is saying. Well, let's get our attention onto some mainstream party politics. A parliamentary candidate hopeful for Tema in the Tema East constituency for the MPP, Ben Ashite, it's highlighting tensions and disunity in the constituency as reasons why the party's fate there may hang in the balance in the next primary to take place on April 27. According to him, factions within the constituency are mainly due to the leadership style of the incumbent MP Daniel Titus Glover submitting his nomination forms at the party's head office in the constituency. Ben Ashite believes delegates could save the party by electing him as the parliamentary candidate elect in April. Correspondent Kwame Yanka has more in the following report. In 2015, Ben Ashite lost narrowly in the party's primaries to incumbent MP for Tema East constituency, Daniel Titus Glover. He says his desire to represent his people in parliament to spearhead development and job creation is pushing him to try again. 
Ben Ashiti asserts Daniel Titus Glover's style of leadership in the area has not brought the needed impact. He cited disunity amongst other intra-party challenges which could damage the party's chances. Uh, look, I've already said it, that the delegates themselves, they are quest to see a new leadership, a new leadership that will give them hope, a new leadership that will, uh, that will fight for them and understand their plights. And Ben Ashita stands for that leadership. Of course, the current leadership has not been able to do well uh, per the assessment from the delegates, per the assessment from the general electorate in Tema East. Tema East has been one of the constituency that has a very unified front. As I'm talking to you now, that thing is now in the past. That is why Ben Ashite, I, I keep hammering that I am the one who, who is going to bring about the unification of the uh, uh, You see, it, it starts from one. What I've, I've done previously is that to make sure that I run a very decorum campaign so that uh, I will not step on so many toes. Now, our MP has, also has followers, no matter what. You understand? Even the devil has followers. And so you must be able to do your things well so that you will be appealing to the devil, even the devil himself. Meanwhile, Constituency Secretary for Tema East, Nene Sakite, who received the forms, says Ben Ashite has met all requirements, although he seemed to have lost touch with the base since the 2015 primaries. We cross-checked all the necessary documentation that he has submitted. We went through the documents and everything is in order. Well, he expected us to write our constituency comments here so that he wants to be sure that the assumption he's having that he'll be maligned. Which, even though we gave him assurance that nobody is going to malign, he's going to be free, fair and very competitive, uh, we wrote. And uh, we indicated to him that he, he's somebody who has not natured the constituency. When he lost the primaries, he has not showed so much commitment to the party, especially he having the ambition to contest these primaries again. So it is our expectation that he will get himself involved in key party activities in terms of funding. Soon we'll be doing registration. You will not see people coming. And we don't want the party to be a vehicle where people will work. And when it comes to uh, contest, then you see people appearing. We are not a brigade. In April this year, the new patriotic party will hold its primaries for 169 constituencies where it has sitting members of parliament. Kwame Yankes report for Joy News. A number of police personnel are currently undergoing training to pilot three helicopters procured by government in line with setting up an airborne unit for the Ghana Police Service. The service is optimistic. The new addition of a force or a department will make the police service more efficient and very much responsive in attending to crime. Director General in charge of legal and prosecutions, uh, the COP Prosper Aglo, who read or spoke on behalf of the Inspector General of Police at the annual West African Security Services Association celebrations, said the provision of logistics and the implementation of a number of policies and programs seem to have not only increased the operational efficiency of the Ghana Police Service, but also boosted the morale of personnel across board. The government continues to boost the strength of personnel of the service. We are therefore Thankful to the President of the Republic, the government continues to equip the service with, with operational resources, especially vehicles. For the past three years, the number of vehicles, vehicles presented to the Ghana Police Service by government is over 700. As was reported previously, the government has acquired three helicopters for police operations and patrols, and currently, Six personnel are undergoing aviation and flying training in South Africa. At the event was the Vice President, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, who said over 20,000 officers have since been promoted, whilst compensation seemed to have also been paid to families of officers who died in the line of duty. When we assumed office, we realized that one of the problems affecting morale was the lack of promotion that was supposed to take place across the service. 
So we decided to correct this. And since January 2017, in just three years, approximately 20,000 officers have been promoted across all ranks within the security service, which has boosted their morale and also enhanced performance. We've also significantly increased compensation paid to families of officers who die in the line of duty. Well, that's it for the news. But as you already know, APSA has now fully uh, taken over Barclays. And APSA is now your preferred bank if you were uh, a Barclays customer. Well, just in case you want to join uh, the family of APSA, you can do so. You can see that we're well associated with that transition. But what we are also associated with have been over the last uh, week and two is making sure all of us, when we set foot uh, from home or wherever we're going to our various destinations and we use the road, we're safe on the road. And that is why, well, just in case you have uh, accident scenes, you have chance on some of those experiences of accidents, poor driving methods or the poor state of vehicles and you want to report to us, make sure that you tag us on Facebook, join us on TV. You also give us more of them as you comment on Twitter through at Join News on TV, uh, we'll be very much grateful. And always add hashtag AM show, hashtag Join News, hashtag Arrive Alive. It's all about 25 years of excellent broadcasting and media content provision right here on Join News. Well, next, myself and Joseph Frimpon Akable will be interacting. We'll be looking at stories occupying the front and back pages as well as the center spreads of the various dailies or the newspapers as we have in the studio. Do stay with us. <laughs>